Hi everybody, this is Manuel Guitel Real and welcome to another episode of MGR Unplugged. I'm here once again with David Gill, host of the Edge podcast. And uh, today we're going to discuss all things Amazon. We are, we've been flooded with Amazon news in the last uh, few weeks actually, and we've written about it uh, both on the um, MGR blog website and I think David is also... Uh, had a few uh, of his podcasts regarding some Amazon news, but I thought it was good to uh, kind of get together and uh, discuss together some of the uh, latest developments, and we get a lot of questions from clients and so forth. So I think it's good that we're both together here now just clarifying some of the uh, latest news and how what's going on with Amazon, how is it affecting some new vendors and sellers and so forth. So um, welcome, David. Hey, how's it going? Good, good, buddy, good, buddy. Hey, yeah. So let's let's start with the basics. Basically, uh, we know when we, s you know, when you set up an account with Amazon, and you can be set up as a seller or as a vendor. And um, obviously, for me, the difference is clear. Uh, just like in the retail world, not so much in the online retailer, uh, you can be reselling a product, um, or you can be actually uh, selling it to Amazon as the uh, as the actual retail store. So, but as far as the setup or or what are the pros and cons that you see from your experience on being set up as a vendor or as a seller? Well, first, to be a vendor, a anybody can be a seller. You can just sign up and create a seller account. Uh, obviously, there's hurdles to that. You have to go through different approval process, but uh, anybody can be a seller. To be a vendor, you have to be approved by Amazon. You have to be invited, I should say. Um, so it's not for everybody and normally vendors it makes sense if you're a higher volume seller bigger brands so you'll see uh on amazon the easiest way to see if someone is a vendor or a seller is when you go in the amazon listing if it says shipped and sold by amazon that means it's a vendor uh, because that basically means amazon is buying the product from them and then selling it themselves in most cases, when you do see that, it's from bigger bigger brands, bigger companies. Um, the key difference is just that when you're a seller, you're basically just using the marketplace. It's kind of no different than even putting something on eBay, basically. You're responsible for trying to make the sale, uh, and then Amazon will take a commission from that. When you're a vendor, it's kind of like selling into a retail store, like you were saying. like basically you negotiate a price with amazon and then they're going to give you purchase orders on a weekly basis that's the main difference it's a weekly basis so you have to make sure your supply chain and uh, manufacturing and whatever you need to do is is completely tight because you can't miss a shipment so so um as far as the economics of the uh, of the becoming a vendor versus a seller um there's bigger brands that also decide to become or be sellers rather than vendors right the difference and is uh, when you're a vendor you you give a lot of uh suggestion to amazon but ultimately amazon is in control of your listings and your uh branding on amazon basically they're creating the listings they're creating your store page they're doing all of that now obviously they're going to use all of your brand standards and design and all of that but they're in charge. Uh, when you're a seller, you control everything. Um, the, the other difference is that uh, these days, Amazon is kind of doing less for vendors. So before, they used to do a lot more advertising on right, behalf that's of vendors. Heard. Yeah. Uh, now, a lot of vendors are complaining because they say, so I now I, because the difference is if you're a seller, yeah, you don't get the immediate revenue of selling the product basically selling x amount of units straight to amazon but amazon only takes say a 15 percent commission that's kind of the most common commission if you're a vendor very often you're selling your product basically wholesale so half the price of what you would sell at retail so so as far as advertising that's a key point because that's one thing that i think uh, i mean i actually wrote about that a couple of weeks ago i think on our mgr blog but um so when you're a seller, you're in charge of advertising your product. When you're a vendor, Amazon will advertise it for you or basically advertise it for themselves because they are basically now the, the retailer. They are selling it for you. Yes and no. Basically, they will do. They will uh, 
do some advertising. They're not very clear, really. That's the thing that people uh, get upset with, the vendors get upset with. They're not very clear on how much they're going to do for you. For some brands, they do a lot. For others, they do very little. But the biggest complaint is that a lot of times you become a vendor and then you still have to spend a ton of money advertising to get your product sold. But instead of only giving Amazon 15% of the sale, now you're giving them 50%. So that's why a lot of people are choosing to become sellers again. And, and the other thing now with Amazon um, is pretty much dictating to the vendors the, the uh, retail price or what the cost of their goods is supposed to be. In other words, Amazon has put a priority on making money selling over, over making money advertising, even though Albert, Amazon is now the third major advertising platform. Um, in a way that pretty much they've said to some vendors, if we are not able to make enough money selling your products, we will not advertise your product, basically. Yeah, and the other thing that they do is because Amazon always wants to beat everyone on price, uh, they will sell your product at a lower... So if, say, you're a larger brand and you have a deal with Walmart and uh, Costco or whatever, and you're, and you're selling their, your products, say, for uh, $20 a unit in Walmart... Uh, Amazon, because they control the price when you're a vendor, if they want to undercut, then they can go and sell for uh, 18 bucks instead of 20 And that often can make now Walmart unhappy too because they're saying, hey, what the heck, Amazon's undercutting us. Um, so Amazon, basically being a vendor, it's very situational. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It just very much depends on your situation as a business. Um, but to me, it makes sense if you're a very large brand. I'm talking a company doing, uh, at the minimum, probably a million or more a year in revenue. So the bigger brands, like you see, like the Procter and Gamble's and Lever yeah, and all that stuff, all, those are all basically set up as vendors, right? And they don't have any issue because they are based on the sheer volume. And when you're so big, right. you have contacts at the highest level at Amazon too, mm -hmm. and you can custom suggest and request and all of these things. When you're a smaller seller uh, trying to become a vendor, you're gonna get a lot less support from Amazon. So that's kind of the biggest challenge. If you're a big company, yeah, go for it. But if you're starting out on Amazon, it's probably better to be a seller. All right, so let's focus now on the sellers. Since that's basically majority of the people that right. we that we work with are usually sellers. They're not the bigger brands. They're all basically deal directly with major contract with Amazon, but uh, the sellers are the, the smaller uh, um, operations that want to just sell their products on, on Amazon. So one of the deals that we, one of the issues that we deal with most of the times is when we recommend to our clients to register their brand as soon as they can, you know, just to, to, to be able to apply for Amazon brand registry. And we know that that has a lot of advantages um, on the back end, obviously, as far as the features that you can enjoy from Amazon Seller Central or Seller Program. Um, uh, tell us a little bit, or tell me why, why you think the brand registry is so crucial or critical for, for, for sellers, that to, to start thinking about that from the beginning, because obviously getting a registered trademark is not a overnight process. I mean, you need to go through it with the United States Patent Office and all that stuff and trademark uh, uh, registration process, which usually takes, it could take up to a year. Yeah. So uh, to tell me a little more about the, uh, the registry and, and why that is so important. Yeah, so it's a program that Amazon implemented probably a couple of years ago now, um, basically to do a few things. The main thing was because there was a lot of uh, fraudulent selling and fake selling. So one of the bigger examples was Nike, for example. A lot of the like Nike clothing was basically not real Nike. It was fake ripoff. You know, they put the Nike logo on the clothing, whatever, but it's not real. And you were selling it as it was real. So someone's paying forty dollars for Nike when really it's some ripoff thing. Um, and that was one of the bigger examples, but that was happening all over the place on Amazon. So they implemented this brand registry program where basically if you're the owner of a brand, if you're Nike or if any, anybody, it basically as long as you are the owner of the trademark, uh, you can now register your brand with Amazon and you have complete control. And so when you register with brand registry, there's a lot of advantages. But one of the biggest is that you can basically go in and there's a, on the registry homepage, there's a thing that says report a violation 
And anybody that's selling your stuff that you didn't say yes to, basically you submit to Amazon and they'll take them down right away. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, what they started doing, because that was the first thing, was just protecting the brand. But now they started uh, enabling what's called enhanced branded listings, which is new because before, that's actually a thing that vendors versus sellers uh, one advantage was you had what's called A plus listings, mm -hmm. which is uh, for people listening. When you go on a listing, some listings just have basic bullet points and some text, and you'll see other listings that have almost like an entire landing page on the listing. Correct, with right. With tons of graphics and explanations mm -hmm. and all that. That's basically called an enhanced brand. So you have to be registered as a brand to be able to get that kind of landing page exposure for your product. Right. And if you want a store page, basically there's two types of store pages. One is the default, which is you click on the brand name um, of the seller uh, on, if you're on a product page, and it'll just list all the products that a seller has. It just is what they sell. Uh, if you have a brand registry, uh, then you can create a store page that one has a custom link, so you can do Amazon.com slash your brand and send people mm -hmm. there. So it's basically like a landing page for all your products. And it's... It's almost like a mini website. It's, on a, it's a microsite. Yeah, you, you yeah. even have a navigational tab so you can select different product categories. So you have a brand that sells in different categories of uh, cleaning services or cleaning products or electronics or whatever. You can have actually different navigation to, like you said, like a microsite within Amazon. Yeah, and to you display can totally customize products. it. You can have uh, special deals on the front. You can have your best selling products on the top. And then, yeah, you can organize. It's basically a mini and, and just to clarify, there's no additional cost from Amazon to set that up other than the process of becoming a brand registry or registered mark with, with Amazon, which is a procedural thing. Obviously Amazon will not charge you as far as seller fees or anything else. No for this additional exposure or landing pages and product enhanced product listings and things like that? No, it's completely free. Okay. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, obviously one of the things that shows you that Amazon is protecting the sellers or making the sellers register their brands is the fact that a lot of the new features that they're coming up with are actually exclusive for sellers that are also registered. For example, the latest thing that they came up with, I think it was just two months ago, is Amazon Live which is, uh, I mean, there's a lot of writing about that, but it's, it's fairly new, but it's almost like Facebook Live, Instagram Live. Um, uh, so you can basically record a live stream showcasing your product within the Amazon environment, and then uh, you can uh, schedule the, uh, the stream to go um, on Amazon at certain times. You can use it to promote your products later. You can boost it like you would do with a sponsor listing. Um, so it, it's, it's basically almost like a QVC or home shopping network um, for Amazon in which you have your product and you have a, yourself, the owner or spokesperson or somebody showcasing it. Mm -hmm. um, and, but that's one of the things that is new, but it's also limited to sellers that are registered, World Brand Registry. Not every clown could go there with a product that is not even theirs and then advertise it. Right. And, you know, in that case, it's definitely good for products that... Uh, maybe require a little bit of demonstration to mm -hmm. kind of explain it, make the sale type of thing, a little education. A lot of people use it for makeup, cleaning, uh, yeah. house products, things like that. You know, some electronics I've seen. But, I mean, you can go to Amazon.com slash live and see a lot of videos that are already that are um, some of them with celebrities that sell their own lines of uh, makeup and perfumes and things like that. And some of those are just small owners, small business owners that are selling other products that are for for any type of use. Yeah, and with brand registry, you get access to other things too, like uh, certain types of ads are limited to only brand registry. Obviously, the main part is is their pay-per-click program, which you don't need to be brand registered. They're sponsored ads. That's the one everyone knows, but uh, different types of uh, banner ads and things like that, you do need to be a, a registered brand if you want to have access to those. Uh, they have lots of new programs coming all the time. Like They're going to have a new one rolling out Probably this year, I'm not sure uh, how soon exactly, but it's definitely in the works. It's kind of interesting. It might. It sounds a little invasive, but at the same time, it's it's free. It's basically they have a Amazon sampler program, which is basically um, a company, a brand can decide, hey, I want to send a sample of my product to uh, households that Amazon thinks 
are very likely to buy it or be interested in it. And so if you're a Prime member, at some point this year, maybe next year at the latest, uh, don't be surprised if you start getting Amazon packages at your door that are, you didn't order it, it's just free, and it's basically just a sample of could be whatever. Um, so it's like a, like a version of a, a targeted audience for ads, except that they actually send you the product. Yeah. Wow. That's Basically, they say it's <laughs> kind of like, you know, you go to the grocery store and sometimes they have the person giving out samples, yeah. but now they're going to send it to you straight to your so door. So they probably use your, your buying history, your yeah. browsing history and all that stuff. And then they say, okay, this person is a candidate to be, to like this kind of uh, electronic product or this or that or whatever. Right. So if then you're, they just say it to you. If you're a big coffee drinker or something and you try all these different coffees and Amazon knows but, you buy coffee. But doesn't Amazon already have what they call uh, like a pr approved or authorized reviewers that sometimes when I see reviews, it says. Yeah, but that's different. That's different. That's just to re receive the product for free too in exchange for a review and they disclose it. But that's completely different than this, which is just basically. Yeah, that's a example. different program. That's. Um, I forget the name of it exactly, but basically Amazon has a couple of different review programs, okay. uh, but that's different. Uh, but what I was saying is like, if you're a heavy coffee drinker, just for example, uh, and then some co am. coffee, some coffee <laughs> brand says, okay, this guy buys coffee, uh, once a month, we're going to send him a sample of our coffee, see maybe if he likes it. And then if you like it and you say, okay, maybe I'll try this again, something like that. Uh, that's basically the idea of the right. Program. So there's no condition saying, okay, uh, in exchange for this, leave a review. It's completely no, 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 no free. strings attached. Nothing. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a that's a good program. I mean, obviously, like you say, it's a little bit uh, maybe intrusive. If you say, why, why did I get this? It is, but at the same time, I don't think people are going to complain when they get stuff for free. Well, it depends so. on how they target you. Because I mean, I, I browse for a lot of things that I just do it, and it's not something that I'm really interested in. I may just look at something, and then maybe my uh, browsing history creates a profile of me that is not really where I am or who I am, but uh, maybe I get something that is like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> like camping things or something. It's like, well, yeah. I never go camping, but I just look for something, you know. I would guess it's probably going to be based mostly on purchase history. Right, right. Yeah, I guess, I guess that makes more sense. Bought. So getting back to the advertising, obviously Amazon is becoming a huge, uh, basically the third superpower in advertising. Um, obviously, we know Google is the is the largest online advertising platform, and then obviously after that, Facebook slash Instagram is is catching up real fast. But Amazon is right there. I mean, they've they've come with they've improved their advertising a lot, including their their own uh, demand side platform and a lot of different forms of advertising that are not just limited to people selling on Amazon, but now they allow any third party agency company to advertise on Amazon. In other words, if I uh, if I'm looking for a trip or a hotel or something, that hotel can be advertising within Amazon when I'm searching for products or something. So they're opening their advertising real estate to, to other platforms for programmatic advertising and so right. forth. Um, but the other thing is that when it comes to product advertising, and this is something that we've seen ourselves as an agency, it used to be that companies used to advertise on Google for um, cleaning products or electronics or this or that or bicycles, whatever you're looking for, and you look for the product on Google and then you see the listing on Amazon as a basically paid advertising listing and then it takes you to Amazon and then you also were paying Amazon to sponsor your product so they will appear at the top of the results page and so forth. And now a lot of the advertisers are realizing why go through Google first because people are going directly to Amazon as a search engine for products. So you can go to Amazon directly in the search bar and say, um, bicycle tire repair kit and then they come up with all of them so if I'm an advertising and sell those products I can actually just advertise on Amazon and I don't even have to go to Google so the budget is shifting and it's going instead of Google it's going directly to Amazon which is making Amazon like a pretty much the number one search engine for product search yeah so I did a whole episode on Amazon's um, goals for their advertising uh, platform and the fact that they are actively trying to grow it. Uh, they are now, I believe, the third largest advertiser uh, behind Google and Facebook, and they're growing quickly. And the thing that they're trying to do, they're really battling Google, as you said, because they don't care about um, generic search. So if you're searching, what's the distance from Earth to Mars? They don't care about that. That's not a money-making search. They care about 
uh, I'm looking for dog food or something, right? Because that's where people are going to buy right, right. purchasing searches. Uh, and so on those, they are very actively trying to compete with Google, but they have the inherent advantage of one, they have tons of Prime members, which basically is a built-in customer base already. So if you're looking to buy something, you're much more likely to go to Amazon and search for it than to go to Google and search for it. And advertisers and brands are realizing this and saying, why spend so much on Google right, right. when people are just going to Amazon directly? It's like Google became the middleman for product advertising. Right. And they eliminated the middleman and put all their budget directly to Amazon. Right. And, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Right. I mean, their advertising platform has doubled in the last 18 months as far as didn't, revenues. Uh, and as far as targeting and programmatic and all that, didn't, didn't you say something? There was a line that I'm not sure who said it. Holy, maybe I read it on your, uh, on your article. But it was um, something like Google knows what you want and Facebook knows what you like, but Amazon knows what you're buying or something like that. I don't know who said it, but uh, it basically it's true. I mean, people go to Google based on intent, like I'm going to travel somewhere, I want to find hotels, or I want to find my best offer here or there or whatever. Um, when you go to Facebook, it's more based on interest because they know all you, what you like, who your friends like, what you do, where you go, all the basic social media environment. But Amazon actually knows what you actually end up buying and your browsing history, and they know what you are. So they know that you're buying like goggles, for diving, they know you're going to a beach or umbrellas or this or that. I mean, they actually know your consumer profile more than any other search engine or anything. So they have a huge amount of data about you and, and what you buy year-round, obviously. Right, and that's why the other part is, so they, they're definitely building out their search platform, and they've been doing that for years. But the other part is, yeah, they're, they're creating their own um, essentially ad network, and they want to continue to expand that. And part of that is, yes, they have purchasing behavior. Now, I mean, I'm not saying that other platforms don't have, I mean, Google and Facebook have tons of data too. But as far as who has the most buying pattern behavior, yeah, it's Amazon. And it's not even close, really. And the thing is that Amazon has so much data that they can know a lot of times what you're going to buy next just based on your previous purchases because right. they've seen, okay, people who typically buy A and B, they're very, very likely to buy this product C. And then they're going to start showing you that product. And yeah, yeah. I, I actually saw the example the other day about this uh, uh, recording machine. Um, and then if for some reason it didn't come with uh, – AC power adapter. It was only operated with batteries, and I didn't even know there was an option for that. And then, guess what? Uh, a couple of days later, I'm browsing something else on the internet, and I see an ad for the AC power unit for the thing that I just bought. And I'm like, oh yeah, I, I will probably need this. I ended up buying it. I mean, that's that's the perfect example of targeted yeah. advertising. You know, upselling you into something that you will need that you didn't buy the first time. Right. All right. So so I know we discussed always obviously a lot of times the. Uh, the shipping wars and how Amazon tries to um, basically do a complete frictionless um, sales process. And one of them is basically the shipping. A lot of companies are able to have online shopping carts and everything that is selling online. But um, the challenge sometimes is that we are spoiled now. And if we don't get something the next day or the next couple of days and free, then it's not good enough. And Amazon has able to, been able to overcome that from, from day one to the point that I think now they just started offering um, next day shipping for Prime members. Is that true? Yeah. I don't think it's fully rolled out yet. I mean, it's not fully rolled out yet, but they said that this year uh, that they want to roll out next day free shipping for all Prime members on Pretty much all products. I pretty much heard that the goal is to offer sometimes same day shipping for they some do. products. I've gotten same day shipping before. I think it's kind of a chance thing. If there's a warehouse near where you live that has the product, you can get it same day. I've gotten right. it before. Um, That's amazing. I mean, the fact that you can order. I mean, I've I've been I've benefited from the next day shipping a few times where I um, order something in the evening. I'm watching TV or even on Sunday. I mean, I'm watching something on um, on Saturday night, and I decide to order something, and it arrives on Sunday. That's just amazing. Yeah, and the bigger thing that you touched on a little bit is that 
really it's a massive competitive advantage. It's funny because the other day I was uh, going, I was looking for a very specific product and I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I found it on this one website and basically it was uh, like $8 or whatever, but then the shipping was $5 and it was ground shipping. So it was like four to six days. I was like, well, that kind of sucks because I have to pay five bucks for an $8 product. Plus it's going to take like you know, four right. or five days to get here. That's the biggest turn off. Then I went to Amazon and it was actually more expensive. It was like $11 instead of $8. But with Amazon Prime, free shipping. I get it free <laughs> two days. Right. So, so it's, it's actually cheaper and I get it faster despite the other site right. having it for a lower price. Right. So that's the mass. But the other site, it was like a smaller e-commerce site. There's just no way they can compete with that. Right. Even right. at the bigger scale, you know, Walmart just responded saying they're going to start offering free one day shipping, but don't think that they're going to be happy about that because that's oh, yeah. costing them money too. Well, yeah. Now Walmart has the advantage of obviously they have stores everywhere so they can kind of get away with that. But yeah, I mean, if you're not one of these big multi-billion dollar companies, good luck competing with their shipping uh, offerings because it's just difficult. All right, so shifting gears for a second now, um, um, briefly now because we're getting a little long here, but um, just uh, on the uh, on the business side, we obviously as MGR as the agency, we we set up Amazon stores for our clients, and we have a lot of experience, and we do this pretty much on a daily basis, and maintain and all that stuff with the marketing. But we've also experienced a lot of new challenges with Amazon as far as listing and basically setting up accounts. Um, what used to be like a free for all, like everybody can do everything. Now they have much, many more restrictions for the type of products you can list. You had to submit a lot of information, and and you actually experienced that firsthand because that's mostly what you do. So, what what kind of changes have you seen in the last, I say, probably three four months, maybe maybe six months, where Amazon has becoming a little more strict as far as setting up new accounts and what kind of products you can sell right away and what kind of uh, documentation you have to submit. I mean, the process has become much more challenging. Yeah, so Amazon, and this is similar to the brand registry where they implemented it because there was a lot of fraudulent sellers selling fake merchandise. Um, they, Amazon has over a million sellers now. And so as you can imagine, when you get to that massive amount, there's going to be bad apples and Amazon wants to reduce the amount of bad apple as many bad apples as possible. And because they already have so many sellers at this point, it's not like they're dying to go get more and more sellers as fast as possible. They want quality sellers. And so because of that, they've really over the past year added a lot uh, especially depending on what you're selling. But j for all sellers in general, they've added many more hurdles that you have to go through. And it's not like a massive hurdles, but it can definitely delay things. Um, and obviously, now, the, the bad side is that they their seller support, if you, anyone listening has ever tried to deal with their seller support, it's pretty famously bad. Their customer support's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Seller support. It's a little bit of lacking and a little bit of arrogant saying it's our way or the highway. Basically. Even now, I've noticed just in the past six months, it is much more difficult to even get someone on the phone. Now they do, and obviously a lot of companies are doing this. It's like they want you to go through all of these web forms, Q&As, all this stuff. And if you go through like, 10 pages then they'll let you call t someone on the phone but it's really mm. difficult and a lot of times you know i'm very experienced with this so i know this is a problem that i have to get someone on the phone for and it'll take me 20 minutes of just going through their stupid automated system just so i can get someone on the mm. phone but yeah so depending on the products you're selling um especially if you're selling something that is you have to look at it from amazon's perspective basically anything that could have a potential liability to them is going to be a higher barrier of entry to get into that category. So the most difficult, for example, or some of the most difficult are things that are consumable. So dietary supplements, anything that's like any type of pill, obviously not prescription, but basically non-prescription uh, supplements, like whatever. Like vitamins and things like that? Anything. Anything that basically is a pill in your mouth is very yeah. difficult. Mm -hmm. um, even food, depending on the type of food you're selling. Basically, they want to see all the uh, FDA documentation. They want to see where you're making it, the facility. They want to see uh, 
basically GMP, good manufacturing practice. And that's just on the consumable side because obviously they don't want you selling bad food or bad pills or mm-hmm. because there were cases in the past where basically people were lying about what's in the capsules. And, and, and that doesn't make a difference whether uh, it's fulfilled by Amazon or no, you're that's actually shipping you it yourself. That's for everything. That's before you get to that point. Okay. To list a... Uh, something that people are going to be putting in their bodies mm-hmm. uh, it takes quite a bit uh, depending on on what you're selling um, but even other products like uh, any type of chemical or anything that has any t- form of uh, basically if your product needs an SDS a safety data sheet even if it's something basic like just maybe you know most things if it's some work it could be like an eye irritant like don't get in your eyes even that can be difficult to get approved just mm-hmm. a simple thing let alone uh chemicals that could be flammable or combustible anything like that because that especially to get into their warehouses mm-hmm. where they have workers dealing with them and they right, actually right. had i think I'm, i forget when it was but it was pretty recently within the last six months they actually had an accident in a warehouse where like i think over a dozen of their workers got like burned and had to go to the hospital some acid or something right yeah some some product chemical leaked or something yeah yeah. fire right that's what they don't want i think they changed didn't they change some of their policy as far as shipping some of those products for that or i i I read something it's something new but i think they were having additional requirements for hazmat type products yeah they're increasing the requirements for everything pretty much constantly so it's just it's it's not if you if you if you're selling on Amazon, it's just that in your starting now, you just have to know that uh, Amazon wants to make sure you're legit. And if you're legit, you're fine. You just have to. It's it's just the the challenge is necessarily proving that to Amazon. And like I said, because their support can be so lackluster, the problem is that a lot of times people want to get started now they're ready to go and right. then i you know a lot of times we just have to tell people yeah this is going to take three yeah, months. i mean in a way this all comes from amazon finally realizing that they probably they grew too fast as far as the uh the uh, online selling and allowing pretty much everybody and their mother to sell anything through the store and then they said okay we need to start cleaning up our act a little bit and like it happened with the upc codes that were stolen and resold and people that actually owned uh, a code we're not able to use it because somebody else took it and i mean there's a lot of bad stories out there but it looks like amazon is trying to clean up their act and start putting a little more uh, strict rules in place for for new sellers and new vendors yeah and at the same time amazon has poor support on the seller side but you also have to realize you know when they have over a million sellers and sellers are constantly dealing with things and constantly wanting to contact support and so I can understand their their difficulties probably in just managing all of the sellers as well. So it's a difficult situation. But overall, yeah, it, it can be a pain at times and it can be there can be a lot of hurdles. But ultimately, it's worth it if you can get access to that Amazon marketplace with 100 million plus prime members. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, once you're in and you, once you have a product that actually sells, it's never going to be a set it and forget it type deal i mean you need to be on top of your product no, like you would do with not. a with a retail store but it's definitely uh the hugest marketplace to be so it's definitely um uh, advantageous for any company just from the branding perspective and the exposure to be on amazon and with that said i always recommend to our clients that regardless of whether you sell on amazon.com or walmart.com or any other com online retailers out there you always 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 keep your own brand the store within your website because that's that's your control your equity and you don't want to lose control of that amazon may change all the rules tomorrow and then if all your income and revenue is coming from amazon or walmart or whatever you're screwed basically so you want to be able to always fall back to your own store and then keep your customers and then continue selling through your own store yeah it's no different than you know if you're selling only to one retailer uh, you're that's basically a risk you know if your only buyer is walmart and then walmart says hey uh, we decided not to renew your purchase order uh, yeah then you could be mm-hmm. out of business so it's the same idea with amazon you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket and i think most people understand right, right. that uh yeah it's just being smart and it's really you need a strategy too it's about having a strategy for e-commerce and saying 
how much are we going to devote to Amazon? How much are we going to devote to our own e-commerce site? And playing with the balance and seeing really how things are going on each. But yeah, ultimately, Amazon can be difficult at times, but um, overall, it's worth it to because the potential of getting a massive revenue source is there. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the truth. Yeah, and that's, that's why that's sellers at the end of the day, you know, I'm on the seller forums all the time because, you know, as, as much experience as I have, lots of times there are new errors that pop up that I'm like, I don't even know what this right, is. Right, right. I mean, they, they, it is worth going through the, through the hurdles. You but know? my point is, as much as sellers, you know, complain on these forums and, you know, say, oh, this sucks, Amazon support sucks, they deal with it anyways because right. of the opportunity that Amazon The reward has. is there at the end. Right. All right. Well, David, I think this is good to wrap it up. Um, there's a lot of more questions that I have as far as specifically on the business-to-business -business side of selling of Amazon as well. That could be a whole different conversation. But I think for today, it's good enough. And um, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us on uh, MGR Unplugged. And um, we're actually on the Edge website now, and you can find us there. And you can also find us on uh, pretty much any uh, podcast network, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, you name it. So thank you for joining us. And uh, until next time, this is Manuel Gildal-Real with uh, David Gill. Thank you. Bye-bye.